Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Matt, thank you for stopping by. Now I've got another British Columbia pattern for you today. It's one I got out of Arthur James Lindgren's Fly Patterns of British Columbia. Now I picked this one because, well, while it was created out in British Columbia, it's a pattern that'll do well here in the States. It'll do well out West, here in the Mid-Atlantic, pretty much anywhere you've got caddis flies and particularly this green-bodied fly. Now, the Williams in the name was Brian Williams, British Columbia's first provincial game warden. He was active in the 20s and 30s, a contemporary of Roderick Haig Brown. He published a book in 1935 called Fish and Game in British Columbia. And in this book, he talks about his sedge flies and how effective they were out there in the interior lakes, Lake Knopf and Hyas. Now, the trout they were targeting in these interior lakes were their steelhead. They're the big 10 plus pounders, and the caddis flies in these lakes were huge. I'm talking sizes sixes and eights. So these are some big bugs catching big fish. And I'm sure this pattern will be effective on some American steelhead waters. But I'm going to tie this in more of a smaller trout size. I'm tying it on a size 10 just to match some of the caddis that we have here in the mid-Atlantic. I know we do have uh, some rivers that have a green-bodied caddis, and I know some of the waters down in Smoky Mountains have one as well. Now, the pattern is not that difficult to tie. There might be one challenge to it. It does call for green seals fur, and the closest thing I've found to an alternative for seals fur is maybe an Angora wool. It's some really coarse and uh, kind of crinkly material, but you know, it's a challenge because it's just hard to get on the thread. So today I'm going to be tying it using a dubbing loop. Now, if you don't have any seals fur or a wool that would match it, just use rabbit and you won't even need a dubbing loop if you're using something like rabbit. So it's a pretty cool pattern. I think you're going to like it. Let's give it a shot. There's one in the vise. Brian Williams green bodied sedge. I'm tying this on a size 10. It's a pretty big fly for a sedge. Um, 10, you could go an eight even. And I'm using black thread. This is a standard length dry fly hook. I'm putting down black thread. This is 70 denier UTC. I'll put a base all the way down to the start of the bend. Now the dubbing on this calls for dyed green seals fur. Now, if you've got, you know, imitation seals fur, you'll know it's still pretty hard stuff to put on. Uh, so you'll definitely want to wax up your thread pretty good. And even, even with it waxed pretty well, I'm still going to put it in a dubbing loop. So I'll show you that in just a second. Now substitutes for, a good substitute for this seal or, or Euro seal is a wool, an, an Angora wool will dub on pretty much just like this. And it's also a natural fiber, so it'll give you a lot of the same properties. So you see this, it's not going on the thread real, real tight. So I'm gonna put a noodle about maybe four inches and fairly thick right now, but then when I spin it in the loop, it will tighten up. Now it's still gonna be buggy, but it will at least tighten up to where it will be a, a durable fly. So I put my finger in, create the loop right here. Okay, that's gonna be fine. Now I'll take my thread back up here. Now this is a convenient tool if you don't have it. This is a, a heavy brass dubbing spinner. It's got a hook on one end. So you just put that in your loop. Let's get this out of the way. And if your loop isn't too long and your dubbing spinner doesn't hit the, the table, I will just hold this bobbin out of the way and then give this a tight, quick spin. And it probably just spun around about 30 times right there. So now what I've got is this noodle right here. And you can still see some thread through it, but that's fine. Now I'll take it out of the dubbing spinner, use some clip-on hackle pliers, spring-loaded hackle pliers, and I'm just gonna wrap this up. And you'll see that it's still gonna be pretty spiky and pretty buggy, but that's fine. It's gonna look pretty good. So just take this all the way up. Now catch it off up here about a couple of eye lengths back. We've got a wing and then a hackle to put on it. 
So if that looks like it's only loosely caught in, don't worry about it. It's enough of it is caught in really tightly that it will be a durable fly. So the wing on this guy, it's just a mallard flank, a natural or dun colored mallard flank right here. So I'll pull about, probably about 20 of these out and cut them if you want, or just, you know, grab them and try to pull them off. I think I've got about 15, maybe a little bit more right there. And the length of the tail, just a little bit past the bend of the hook. So I'd say right there is going to work. Let's catch this in with a pinch wrap. Okay, that's going to be fine right there. A couple more securing wraps going up here. I'm going to snip off this excess mallard. And you might want to put a couple wraps right here just to smooth this out where we're going to wrap our, our hackle. Okay, that should be fine. Now, the hackle on this thing is just a, a ginger colored, a light brown, maybe a, a badger colored if you've got that and a good dry fly hackle. I'm going to catch it in right here in front of the wing. Several wraps. And I think that should be enough right there. Let's go ahead and snip this off. And I might spend a couple extra wraps just trying to bury that butt end in right there. Okay. And how many wraps on this thing? I think as many as you can get. Probably six. Try to keep them going perpendicular out like a good old classic dry fly. So maybe seven if you can get them. The only picture I've seen of this in the British Columbia book had a pretty thickly hackled fly. So I think, let's see, now I'm falling off that step right there. So I think we're good right there. Might have a few of them pointing forward that we're going to have to tend with by either pushing them back or trimming them, but that's okay. Happens on a lot of dry flies. Let's go ahead and get rid of this excess. And before I snip those, I'm just going to try and push them back a little bit. So let's go pull these back and then take a few wraps right here. And I'm not taking the thread wraps too far back because I don't want these hackle fibers to really be swept back. I want them to be sticking out perpendicular like a dry fly should. So I think we're fine right there. We might have a couple of little nubs to trim, but let's go ahead and put our whip finish on and see how it looks. Yeah, we've got a couple right here to trim. Probably not gonna affect how it fishes, as long as you don't get any head cement in your eye, you'll be able to get your tippet through there and you'll have a, a good fishable fly. So there you go, folks. Brian Williams, Green Bodied Sedge. Pretty cool pattern, a British Columbia original. I appreciate y'all watching. Take care and we'll see you next time. All right, everybody. Welcome to my computer screen. What you are looking at is the Savage Flies YouTube homepage. And I'm about to give away the five copies of the, the history of fly fishing and 50 flies. So if you're new here, how we do this, I just copy this link location, go up here to YouTube, random comment picker, I paste this URL in, and I do have to filter for the text. This one was hashtag history. So let's see how many commenters we have that use that hashtag, 72. We've got 72 commenters, so uh, five of you are gonna win. Let's select the first winner here. And the first book is gonna go to Josh Harbin. Congratulations, Josh. And let's see, let's pick number two winner. We've got Stephen Wiersma. All right, congratulations, Stephen. I recognize that name. Stephen comments on a lot of videos, so thank you, my friend. Let's pick number three. And we got Kevin Gully. Kevin, awesome. Kevin, you can get book number three. Let's pick number four. 
right here. And we got JD338. I think that is John. J JD. We've emailed a couple times, so congratulations, John. So before we pick the last one, let's recap. We've got Josh, Steven, Kevin, and JD, or John. Let's pick the fifth and final book. Here we go. And we got G.D. Riley, that's George. So G.D. Riley, congratulations, my friend. I appreciate all your folks who left comments and support the channel. Stick around. If you didn't win this time, we do something like this at least every month. We got a, a big one. I just got a Jay Stockard order in today. So I've got a, a nice uh, Umqua tool set we're gonna be giving out here in a couple weeks. So that's it, my friends. I appreciate you watching. I appreciate everything y'all do for the channel. Thank you all. Take care. and We'll see you next time.